Hey everyone, and thanks for taking the time to check out this video. For today's short presentation, we're gonna continue talking about the September 15th incident in Florida, except this time we're gonna go into a little greater detail about how we can actually tell the recovered weapon was an SKS, which specific variant it most likely was, and what unique obstacles the FBI might face pertaining to the obliterated serial number. Before we dive in, if you are new to this channel and are interested in going on a much deeper dive into the history, mechanics, and markings of SKS pattern carbines, don't forget to check out my SKS playlist. There's more than 11 hours of super in-depth content in there, including tons of information you will not find anywhere else on YouTube. So first things first, how do we turn a terrible photograph like this into a positive firearm identification? Basically, what we're looking for is called immutable characteristics or properties of the weapon which are not likely to change. Of course, it's important to recognize features like furniture or enablers and ultimately make sense of those within the bigger picture, but keep in mind that guessing a firearm by its stock is like guessing an engine by its chassis. Sometimes that'll work, but sometimes it won't. Instead, we wanna look for those critical components that define the weapon, because those are not likely to lie. And in this case, despite the poor quality of the photograph, we can pretty clearly make out a piston-driven gas system installed in the 12 o'clock position of the barrel, and this is what it all comes down to. By looking closely, we can make out four critical properties of this gas system. First, we can estimate the exposed length of the gas tube by comparing it to other parts in the weapon, such as the barrel, the magazine base plate, or the trigger housing. Second, we can estimate the diameter of the gas tube by comparing it to the barrel it is installed on. Third, we can determine the smooth cylindrical shape of the gas tube based on how it reflects light. Fourth and finally, we can predict the surface finish of the gas tube, also based on the reflection of light. And long story short, that tells us that whatever else we determine, we are looking for a firearm with a piston-driven gas system that has a smooth cylindrical gas tube, roughly the same diameter as the barrel, approximately four inches of which is exposed, most likely in a blued finish. And I know some people will call BS on that, but you really can see all that in the picture. If it turns out I'm wrong, feel free to come back to this video and dunk on me. I'm not gonna delete it if I'm wrong, but I don't think I'm gonna be wrong. Either way, once we include all of that in our search criteria, we recognize that only the SKS pattern gas system fits the bill. Lots of folks out there are still saying it is a partially converted Sega, and I'll absolutely admit it does look like that, but we come right back to immutable characteristics. Among other issues, Sega gas tubes are simply shorter, wider, crimped into a star pattern, and finished with a matte paint. Just look at these side by side and tell me which one you think is represented in the picture. So if you are on board with the rifle in question being an SKS, the question now becomes, can we deduce which type of SKS it is? And for those who don't know, there are quite a few distinct variants of SKS. That's why you'll often hear people use the term SKS pattern, because SKS is actually just a Soviet military designation. Forgive my Russian, but it stands for something along the lines of Samozaryadny Karabin Systemi Simonova. And the SKS has been made in quite a few other countries that don't speak Russian or conform to Soviet military designations. Kind of like how in Canada, they don't have an M4 or an M16, but they do have C7s, and all of those are examples of AR-15 pattern firearms. And just to make it more complicated, in addition to other countries' military models, there are several distinct commercial models that have been produced in China, Russia, and former Yugoslavian countries. Again, if you wanna learn a lot more about the dozens and dozens of distinct SKS variants out there, check out that SKS playlist. Back to the question, can we tell which variant this is? Well, the short answer is no, the picture just isn't good enough, but the long answer is we can make an educated guess. And unsurprisingly, it comes right back to the gas tube. I've spent what many would describe as an unreasonable percentage of my adult life staring at SKS pattern carbines, and consequently, I'm very familiar with how light reflects off of different surface finishes and different generations of parts. There's a real chance I'm gonna make a fool of myself here. Obviously the truth will come out eventually, but all the same, I feel fairly confident that the reflection pattern of this particular gas system is indicative of bluing, which has worn quite thin, and a lower handguard ferrule pattern, which was most common in the Chinese military between 1956 and 1966, maybe as late as 1969. And once again, if people wanna call BS on that, this time I kinda get it. I absolutely could be wrong here. It could totally turn out to be a later production Type 56 carbine, a Chinese commercial model, including the interesting SKSD, a Soviet SKS-45, a Romanian M56, a Yugoslavian M59, or even something more exotic. But my money is still on early Chinese military. 
That would also mean, by the way, we are looking at aftermarket duckbill magazines rather than something like the SKSD, which takes standard AK magazines from the factory. One way or another, it will be interesting to see how it all shakes out, and I wanted to put my guess out there before it's public knowledge. High risk, high reward, baby. So finally, the last thing I want to talk about today is the significance of the obliterated serial number, which is currently being reported by the FBI. The main thing to understand here for SKS enthusiasts is that serial numbers on imported surplus rifles from foreign militaries do not work the same way that serial numbers work on American commercial firearms. There are two main issues that come up. First, Chinese Type 56 carbines do not all have unique serial numbers. I won't go into great detail about why this is, but it basically boils down to the fact that the Chinese factory code, which is not part of the serial number, is part of how the Chinese would identify a rifle as unique. In other words, if two Chinese factories were undergoing Type 56 carbine production the same year, they would generally use the exact same serial number set, meaning that at the end of the year, there would be tens of thousands of paired rifles with matching serial numbers. Of course, once you factor in the factory mark, these rifles become totally distinct again, but the problem is the U.S. does not consider the factory mark to be part of the serial number. Now, to be clear, U.S. import authorities eventually caught on to this issue and began requiring that imported Chinese rifles be given a new serial number, sometimes by engraving a totally new string of numbers and letters, and sometimes by simply adding a single letter to the existing Chinese serial number. And we'll come back to that in a second. First, however, there's also an issue with Soviet SKS-45s based on the fact that the U.S. government does not allow Cyrillic letters to appear in the serial number. Russians speak Russian. Unsurprisingly, they mark their guns in Russian, which means that Russian guns are imported with Cyrillic letters in the serial number. When we consider that the Russians typically serialize their weapons in numeric blocks of 10,000 with alternating alphabetical prefixes, we recognize that those Cyrillic letters are really important to preserving the uniqueness of Russian serial numbers. They made a lot more than 10,000 SKS 45s, more like 3.5 million, so if we lose those letters, we're looking at a lot of duplicates. And just to make it even more complicated, some Cyrillic letters look like Latin letters and are therefore acceptable as Latin letters, and other Cyrillic letters look like numbers, such as the Z in Cyrillic looking like our three, and that has surely led to a wide range of misunderstandings. So what does all this mean? Well, the short version is that the serial number of a SKS pattern carbine inside the United States is not always what you think it is, and there are plenty of examples in which serial numbers have been duplicated, serial numbers have been incorrectly recorded, or serial numbers have been changed in ways that just don't make sense. And as just one additional cherry on top, um, some people have pointed out that because SKS pattern carbines are generally military weapons, they oftentimes have serial numbers stamped elsewhere than the receiver. That's absolutely true. But now when we look at that in the bigger picture, we see that that's not all that helpful because in the case of Chinese rifles, that's probably not even going to be the full serial number. In most cases, it's only the production number, which is only one of two fragments, which goes into the serial number. Sometimes it's not even the full production number. And in the case of Russian rifles, it's gonna be the pre-conversion serial number. So you're still gonna be dealing with those prefixes and you still have to ask yourself the question, is this the actual serial number or did the version on the receiver have an engraved alphabetical prefix or suffix or was there a totally different import serial number added and that's what's been defaced, we really just don't know. Finally, even if the FBI is able to use some type of metallurgical sorcery to read obliterated stampings, they might not pick up those lightly engraved prefixes or suffixes that were added in import. So there's always gonna be some level of confusion about whether or not they've got the right serial number. So long story short, I'm giving the FBI a solid 50-50 on this trace. I know they're supposedly good at this stuff and I really don't know much about how traces work, but I know a lot about how SKS serialization works and I could see it getting a little tricky for them. And just on the off chance there are any frustrated FBI technicians searching YouTube for clues, feel free to reach out to me. I'm more than happy to help, but fair warning, I will 100% ask you for expedited NFA paperwork. And that's the video for today, guys. As always, hope you found this entertaining, educational, or at least worth the time you spent watching it. If you did enjoy this video, please consider doing any of the YouTube algorithm stuff, like, comment, subscribe. If there's any part of this story that you'd like to see covered that I haven't talked about yet, please let me know in the comments. And other than that, hope you have a great rest of your day.